That is so awesome. Good job, Bob. Welcome to the video, y'all. Hey, guys. We are in Holland, Texas. And I can't remember the name of this place. It's a learning slice farm. Slice of Heaven. Oh, Slice of Heaven. Yeah. Good job, Cody. Yeah. So, we're going to do a presentation today. Or talk. Yep. Texas yeah. Farm Bureau has a, a really good youth program where they like to help educate youth on the free enterprise system, on agriculture, all kinds of stuff. And we were asked... I don't think they want to look at your visor. Oh, sorry. I didn't see the visor. We were asked if we would come and talk about our social media journey, our branding, and just entrepreneurship to the to a group of kids from our district. So there's 13 districts in Texas Farm Bureau, and we're in District 8. So we're going to talk to those kids today about how we all got started. So it'll be fun. Clance is going to Clance is along for the ride back here. He's going to do some videoing. So. Hopefully, we'll get some of it to share with you. Yep. Are we prepared? I am. I don't know about you. Cody! I'm very good at winging it and just going off the cuff. I'm going to go off you. That's what I do. Okay. We'll see. All right. We'll see how it goes. So... We, we grew up in... I'm from District 12. Okay. No, you're District 8. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so like McKenna said, we're Cody and Erica Archie, and we're from Gatesville. Do y'all know where Gatesville is? Anybody know where that is? Okay. Um, so a little bit about us. We're first-generation ranchers, meaning my mom and dad didn't farm a ranch. My grandparents didn't farm a ranch. Neither did Erica's. Um, we have distant family members that, that are in the farming and ranching. Kyle is my first cousin's son, so his dad and I are business partners, and I guess we have about three, maybe four different businesses going right now. You could say that we're serial entrepreneurs. We look for ways to make money. What is the, what's the goal of, of any business? Make money. To make money. I mean, you can say you want to do it because you enjoy doing it. You can say that I want to provide this service. All that is covered up with, if you can't make money and support you and your family, there's, you're not going to be able to keep doing it, right? It takes money to continue to operate, so you have to turn a profit. And profit is not a bad word. I don't care what anybody tells you, you have to make a profit. You can't just break even, because if you just break even, you don't continue to get to play the game, okay? And that's really all making money is, is playing a game. You're trying to produce something cheap enough that you can sell it to somebody else whether it's a goods and a service whether it's a product whatever it may be you're trying to make a profit that's your job that's your goal as an entrepreneur so um you, why don't you tell them a little about our businesses we have okay so we own and operate a dry cleaners and a laundromat um, we have rental properties around town and then we also build some houses um, we obviously have a ranch and then if you don't know us from social media, we're on social media. So we do earn um, an income from social media and our merchandise on social media. So those are kind of the businesses that we're in currently. And we're always open to new ones. So, so kind of Kyle's dad and I, his name is Will. When we, when we, we bought an existing business, okay? So I guess before we get into that, let's talk about... What, what is an entrepreneur? What, what would your definition of an entrepreneur be? Someone finding a way to make money. Okay, someone that finds a way to make money. All right. Someone, what else? Someone who creates jobs for other people and for themselves. Okay, job creator. That's, that's good. What else? Nothing? I like how she said finding somebody finding a way to make money because from early on, that's kind of what our passion was even from before we like bought a big an actual small business we had a passion to make extra money aside from our day jobs so like i i bought a camera and i wanted to take pictures of my kids but then i thought well i can make money doing this so i started taking pictures of other people's kids and things like that and 
Cody does leather work and he enjoys doing that, but then he would make money doing it for other people as well. So from early on, we've always had a drive to make more, find ways to make more money other places. So. Hand me my phone, I had the definition. I wanna, I wanna tell you what Miriam Webster, the dictionary says is. He likes the dictionary, y'all. He uses it at church all the time. So this is, this is what Miriam Webster says is the definition of an entrepreneur. One who organizes, manages, and takes on the risk of a business or an enterprise, okay? So any business that you want to start will make you an entrepreneur. Does that mean you have to come up with something from scratch? No. You can, I mean, if you enjoy, say you like fixing water lines, broke water lines during the winter, and you say, you know what, I think I want to be a plumber, or or you, you spend all winter fixing your neighbor's water line, you're like, you know what, I saw I can make a little money in this, so I'm gonna start a plumbing business, right? You're still an entrepreneur because you didn't go to work for someone else, you, you saw a need and you saw a set of skills that you had that you could fulfill that need with and you take off in that direction, okay? So the thing about an entrepreneur is though is you're gonna take on all the risks involved with starting a new business or or doing something like that, okay? So what are what would you say are the characteristics of an entrepreneur? What would you need in your bag of tools to make you a successful entrepreneur? People, or people skills, being able to talk to people. People skills, okay. Creativity. Creativity, mm -hmm. that's an awesome one. Sense. Some money sense, yeah, okay. Anybody else? So there's kind of, there's lots of characteristics, but there's seven that I wrote down. Um, the first one is vision. What, what does that mean to you to have a, that you would need a vision to be an entrepreneur? An idea. An idea of where you want to go, what you're wanting to do, right? Okay. So we all have lots of ideas. I mean, y'all just came up with some cool ideas, right? But one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that the vision that we have it needs to be something, you know, you can't just sit back and say, you know, I sure like to color in coloring books when I got some free time. I think I'm gonna start a coloring book business and I'm gonna color pictures and try to, you think somebody wants to buy pictures you colored out of a coloring book? You never know. You never know, but, but more than likely, you, your vision needs to be uh, filling a void in a market somewhere, improving a, something in the market already. You know, like, like y'all were talking about your pig bats. If, if one of those, is wearing out a vision that you may have is that, hey, I want to improve this product and make a better product, okay? Having a vision of where you wanna go as an entrepreneur, what you wanna do is super important. Our vision when we started our social media journey, we're gonna kinda tailor all this around our social media and we're gonna add in the other stuff, was to <coughs> advocate for agriculture. We love agriculture. And we know that agriculture is super important. It's, it's the backbone of our country. It's the backbone of our society. Without agriculture, society doesn't exist, right? If we don't have someone to produce our food, our fiber, and our fuel, we're not going to be able to operate, right? We, got, we can do without video games. We can do without these cell phones. We can do without jewelry and all that kind of stuff. But we got to have something to eat every day. We got to have a place to live, and we got to have you know, clothes on our back. I mean, we can get by without clothes, but it'd probably be a lot better for everybody to have them. So. so having a vision. Then the next thing is passion, okay? When, when I say passion, what, what do you think of when I say, what do you think of when I say you have to have a passion? Like a, like emotional connection to something that keeps you going. Okay. You see that? All right. What do you think of when I say passion? One of you obviously has a passion in, in firearms because your 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 deal was a gun, right? You must love firearms, right? Okay. I hate how loud they are. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this: We own a, the the first business we bought was a dry cleaners and a laundromat. Do you guys think I have a passion for dry cleaning and laundry? <laughs> huh? Maybe for helping people. Okay. Kyle, where do you think my passion is? I think you're driven to make money, and I think you saw an opportunity. Exactly. That's my, my passion. <laughs> my passion is not getting people's clothes clean and pressing clothes and doing that kind of stuff. My passion is to earn an income where I can add more land. That way when we, when we kick the bucket, I can leave him a ranch big enough that he doesn't have to go to town to work. 
or a sister and their kid, you know, and their kids have a, have an opportunity to do the stuff that I want to do. I'll never have a ranch big enough for me to stay home from work and work on. But if I work hard enough now and I find those opportunities and I see those areas that are open for improvement and can make money, then that's something I can pass on to my family, you know. And I don't know what's going to happen when I'm dead and gone. He may turn around and sell it and go buy him another laundromat or something. You know, who knows, you know, but that's, that's not for me to worry about. But my passion, our passion when it comes to those businesses is to earn enough income that we can grow the size of our ranching operation. Okay, so having a passion, your passion doesn't necessarily have to be in what you're producing or what you're wanting to make or what your your job is, but your passion need you need to have an end goal in mind of, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this to get to this point down here, even if this isn't what I really love. You know, y'all, what's what's a common saying you hear a lot? If you if you love what you'll do, you'll never what. That's bull. Okay. It may not feel like work, but you're going to work every day of your life if you want to be successful, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to work. So <clears throat> I went on a little rant on TikTok the other day about people say to us all the time, you can't hide money. So like if, if we show a new product that we bought that we're using on our ranch or something like that, they, they say, well, you can't hide money or it must be nice to have that. What, but what's, what's our response to that? We earned it. We worked hard okay. for it. How many hours are in a day? Twenty-four. Do I get two extra? Do I get twenty-six hours to work? No. Do you only get twenty? Mm -hmm. Everybody in this room, everybody on this planet, is given the same amount of hours to work each and every day. Mm -hmm. If you choose to spend, pull up your phone when you get home <laughs> on the way home today, and see how many hours you spend on your phone. Okay. It, it, it can be it can be very ridiculous I mean even even us and it's part of our business but if you want to succeed in life especially if you want to be an entrepreneur you're gonna to have to work harder than the guy next to you because the guy next to you just wants to go to work at town go to work work his eight hours and go home if you're gonna work for yourself you're gonna to have to work more than eight hours a day and you're gonna to have to bust it those eight hours or those 10 or 12 hours that you work okay and to get ahead, you're going to have to work harder than everybody else. And you can enjoy your work. I want you That's to enjoy your work. That's what I was going to say. You make it sound like it's miserable. <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying is, is enjoy what you're doing, but work at it. Work at it like it means something to you, like you want to get ahead in life. Because if you don't, you're not going to succeed. You're just going to, it's not going to work out for you, okay? So put the hours in. The, the other thing about being an entrepreneur and being successful is, you you guys are going to have to sacrifice some stuff, and what I mean by that is, is when you're when y'all graduate in a couple of years, and your friends are driving, they, the first thing they do is go out and buy them a brand new Ford pickup for sixty or eighty thousand dollars. You may have to keep driving the truck you've already got. Does it still get you where you need to go? Does it still got you know? Keep fixing it because a lot of people try to keep up with the Joneses and try to put up appearances for what everybody around them's trying to keep up with that. And if you if you don't fall into that trap and you stay buckled down on what's important, by the time you're 45 or 50 years old, you might be ready to retire or sell this business that you created and go on and live. You can live the rest of your life the way you want to and not have to work like a slave like they did the rest of the time because they're still paying off all these pickups and cars and boats and all that kind of stuff, all right? So the next characteristic, we've talked about vision, we've talked about having a passion, is motivation. What does it mean to be motivated? The want to do something. The want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have to want to do it every day? No. Do you got to get up and go either way? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you work for yourself, you have to work harder than the other people because if you don't get up and go to work, what happens? No one else wants to Nothing gets done, right? I mean, let's let's say if you if you're if you want to be a corn farmer, if you don't get up and go plant your corn, what happens when it's time to harvest? There's no corn. There's no corn to harvest, which means there's no money in the bank, right? Mm -hmm. Being motivated is super important. Okay, what is our motivation when it comes to our social media journey and things like that? I mean, our motivation is to spread spread the word, spread agriculture. So. If we don't get up there, get out there every single day and put something out, then it's not going to get out there. And if 
if we don't put something out there positive, somebody's putting something out there negative or somebody's putting out there wrong information. So we're trying to always get ahead of the game and put something out there positive. So that's kind of part of our motivating factor is to always stay out there ahead of the game. We will, you know, there, there's a big push and, and it's starting to change now, but for the last 10 or 15 years, the public thinks agriculture is trying to kill them, right? They think, well, you're spraying all these toxic chemicals on our food and we don't want to eat that, you know? They don't realize that if we don't do some of that, you know, we, we, we can't all just have a little garden in our backyard and feed the whole world. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way, right? We have to do, you know, the things we do are safe. We, we feed it to our own families, but we have to get that word out there. We have to be the voice of Texas agriculture, like Farm Bureau's motto is, is we have to get that voice out there. We have to we have to be motivated to put that out there, even though we're going to receive some backlash about it. Okay, um, Clancy, our son shows commercial steers. Do any of y'all show commercial steers or any kind of livestock? Okay, okay. So, when his commer the the purpose of his commercial steer show is to take your steer, make it gain the most amount of weight you can gain each and every day for the least amount of money, right? So to do that, what are some things that we might do to, to help improve that? Supplements. Supplements, okay. We might give that calf an implant to make him convert better on his feed. We might feed him a, 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 a like a supplement, like you said, that helps him convert better. You know, just different type of rations, okay? Well, some people don't understand that, and they say, well, you know, I don't want that. Well, I understand you don't want that, and that's fine, but this is the way we're doing it, and here's why we do it, okay? So being motivated to get get up and go to work every day and to let people know why you're going to work is super important, okay? The next thing is risk-taking. What, what does that mean? What's it mean to, to be a risk-taker? Why do you think an entrepreneur has to have a risk-taking characteristic? Because if they don't know what else will, and uh, if nobody else does, then eventually somebody will. Right. And then if, uh, like, if you're all chasing, like, in a race or something, and there's a dollar at the end of the race, if nobody go runs the race, then nobody's going to get the dollar. But then somebody eventually along the way is going to just come and pick up that dollar. Right. Because they uh, just, like, saw it laying there. Why do you think it's important to be a risk taker, to be an entrepreneur? Because if you're not willing to take a risk, you could lose an opportunity. Absolutely. So being a risk taker, does that mean you just go blindly into anything that, that you think will make money? One of, one of my biggest bad habits, I don't know that it's a bad habit, but I guess, uh, I don't know what's a word for it is, but, and, and Will, my cousin, have the same, we have the same problem. We overanalyze things a lot of times, okay? We'll, we, we'll, we'll see an opportunity and we will pick it apart to the point that we just, we talk ourselves out of it. We probably miss some opportunities. We miss some opportunities. But here's the way I look at, at our financial growth because if we're all trying to make money in the end to, to do whatever we want to do with it, not just to hoard it up and keep it, but when you look at your, your say your net worth, does everybody know what your net worth is? It's where you add up all of the things you have, your car, your truck, your tractor, your business, all of everything you own, and then you, you subtract any debt you owe, that's what your net worth is. How much, if you sold everything and paid everything off, what's your net worth would be, okay? That's what you, how much you're worth, okay? As far as financials go, all right? So let me ask you this, would you rather have, if somebody graphed that from the time you were born till the time you die, would you want it to look like a bunch of mountains and valleys, mountain peaks, or would you rather see a steady climb from nothing to, okay? That, if, if you'll always analyze and look at things in that aspect of, well, you know, you know you're gonna have to take a risk, but if you, if you put yourself out there too much, it could call, you know, there, there's, there's big rewards, but there's also big setbacks, okay? So, when, one of the things, so here, here's a way, let me explain it to you this way. Our business model at our ranch has changed five or six times since we started, okay? When I first bought our ranch, we ran cow-calf. We, we, we bought mama cows and, and raised calves. But that doesn't make money on our acreage. We, you know, our grass isn't good enough to keep them. It, it just, it doesn't make money. So I got rid of all of our cows and we started running yearlings, okay? I worked in a feed yard from the time I graduated college until Eric and I got married. 
And so I had a background in that. I knew how to, how to do stocker caps, okay? So those made really good money, okay? That's good, right? Well, the way I always did that was I would look at those calves. If I was going to buy a set of calves today, I would call and say, okay, how much can I get them bought for? I know what my grass will do, how much I can make them gain. What can I sell them for? If that profit was enough that I thought it was worth my time, I would lock it in right then. Did you think I ever looked back to see, well, did I leave money laying on the table? No, because I knew I was, I was guaranteed to make that much money if I could make my calves perform, which I knew I could do that with the way I took care of them. So if you, if you have a steady growth income, then you're always going to get to keep playing the game, okay? But you are going to have to take risk. You are going to have to step out there. Like when we bought the cleaners, I knew nothing about running a dry cleaners. I, didn't, I wasn't even a customer there anymore. I hadn't been there in five or six years because I thought it was too expensive. It's still too expensive, but, I mean, there are people that are willing to pay money for that, okay? So we took the risk. I quit a job. I actually took about a $40,000 a year pay cut to go from the job that I was at then to owning the cleaners, but it gave me freedoms to go do the things that I wanted to do. I could come and go as I pleased. I could work as much or little as I wanted to. So, you know, if I wanted to go in at six and work till six and then take off half a day the next day to do stuff around the ranch, it gave me those opportunities. So you have to be willing to take a risk if you want to get that reward. The next thing I think you you mentioned was creativity. What does it mean to be creative? not just see the piece of land to be able to see like a building on there and like or um, how much you could like grow on there okay what does it mean to be creative to you new things okay what about improving poor designs how many of you have ever are all of y'all from a farm and ranch background of all of y'all have some kind of okay not all of you all right so how many of y'all have ever ever drug a plow across the field okay, and had a flat on it? How many of you have ever thought when you get out to change that flat, if the engineer that designed this did, never had to take this inside tire off of this plow or he'd have done something different with it, right? How many of you have ever worked on anything that was broke and said, man, or put something together and said, man, this is a terrible design. It's a good product, but it's a terrible design. An entrepreneur can take something and redesign something, make something better. Being creative and thinking outside of the box. Have y'all ever heard the word, the, the, the phrase that um, necessity is the mother of invention? You need something, it's not there, so you invent it to make it happen. Okay, that's, that's the entrepreneurial spirit. It's looking at something, looking at a problem and saying, you know, I can make this better. How many, anybody here have on a Bob Berg buckle? Anybody ever seen a Bob Berg buckle? Is your... Has it got that terrible clip on the back of it? it. Huh? You love it. I think that's the worst. Is it? Show, it, show it to him. Clance, do you have, what, what buckle do you have on? He, he changed. Okay, sh take yours off and show it. Uh, Bob Berg thought this was, yes. Bob Berg thought this is a, a, a better design for a belt buckle. Now, those are terrible in my mind, okay? But Kyle loves it and Bob, and Bob sells a bunch of them, okay? So, so making small little changes to things that already exist is an, a great way to be an entrepreneur. If you see problems in, and you have a creative mind to work through stuff, that makes a big difference. Um, curiosity, being curious. Do you, do you think you can ever know everything there is to know about your place or about, or about what you're doing? Okay. So let me tell you guys. We've, we've implemented, I'm doing all the talking. You, uh, you want to say something? Mike, just go ahead. You, got, keep, you want to say something? Going, no. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, what, have any of y'all ever heard of like intense grazing? You know what that means? Or um, regenerative agriculture? Do y'all know what that means? Okay, so there, there's a, a, a wave of, of folks that are saying that want to get back to grazing cattle so like if i put a cat say this is a hundred acre patch and i turn say 10 cows out here let's say this end down here is all coastal this down here has got little weeds on it there's some goose grass down there what do you think is the first thing the cows are going to eat when we turn them in and if i leave them in there all year what's this coastal patch going to look like at the end of the year what are all these weeds down here going to be and they're going to go to they're going to go to seed and, and next year 
they're gonna take over the goose grass, right? And then a few years later, we're just gonna continue down, right? So what regenerative ag says is I'm gonna make a littler pasture in here on top of these weeds and I'm gonna stick them cows in there. Are the cows gonna like it? No. But are they gonna eat it? Eventually they'll get hungry and they'll say, you know what, I'm gonna eat that, okay? Well then the next day when I move them over here, are they gonna be as selective or are they just gonna start eating because they're like, I'm gonna run out of feed if I don't start eating. I'm just gonna eat everything I can grab, okay? Well when you start to do that, what happens is, as this gets to rest and grow up big, you shave off these, but we also save money, right? Because we didn't spray the weeds. We didn't run across it with a tractor and a spray rig. So doing, being creative and seeing new ways to do stuff and being curious as to, hey, can I change this? Can I make, if I do this to this, is it going to make it better? Then you, that's, that's part of being an entrepreneur. And last but not least, what I think is probably the most important characteristic of being an entrepreneur is confidence, okay? What does it mean to you to be confident? Um, be Are you a confident person? A little bit. Okay. Like All right, awesome. What, what, what do some people call confidence? What's another word for comp? The, it's not another word, but a lot of people mistake confidence for it starts with the A. Arrogance. arrogance. If you're confident, does that mean you're arrogant? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Don't let anybody ever tell you you're you're arrogant if you're confident. If you know something and you're, you've got the, the information to back it up, you're confident, you're not arrogant, okay? Arrogance, arrogance is terrible, but confidence is, is a great characteristic to have. So what does confidence mean? What does it mean to be confident? Like be able to carry yourself like with a certain sureness, like you know what I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I mean, if I tell you that shirt is green, what are you gonna say? No, you're wrong. That's not. It's, it's green. Do that. It'll never work. So if we took this right here. Like a Venn diagram. Huh? Like a Venn diagram. Right. Okay. So over here, we're going to write. Here, here we go. So we're going to take three circles here. So right here, I'm going to write you. This is something that you're really good at. This is where your passion lies. This is where you know you have some innovative ideas, some things that you want to do. This is what you do. This is your competitor, right? This is the stuff they're really good at. And down here is your customer, okay? So most people, when they start a business or they start to do something, this is where they focus their attention, okay? They're, they're pretty good at stuff and they, their competitors are pretty good at stuff and this is where the customer wants to buy stuff, okay? Where do you think the biggest opportunity to make money is? On the other side, uh, beside it, where the here, company, yep. yeah, where the competitor is. It. Okay. Okay. Who, who in this scenario has the money to spend? Customer. So where is all the money to be made? Right there. Right there. Where the what the customer wants, right? It doesn't matter. So like I, I love to do leather work. Okay. Say I love pink buck stitching, and I only want to make belts with pink buck stitching on them. Okay, that's my area, right? I got a, co a co competitor over here that makes it, you know, and I'm trying to fight for these few people. But say all of my customers only want white stitching sewn with a sewing machine. Where do I need to move my? I need to move. I need to move to where the customer spends their money, right? That is the biggest place that, that most entrepreneurs miss their mark is they're passionate about something, they're motivated, but it's only in a small area where they're trying to buy for, okay? I can still make a quality product. I can make it the way I want to, but I need to tailor it to fit the biggest customer base, right? So like when we look at social media, where, who are most of our followers? What do they, what do they look for? They're looking for genuine, unscripted content. So when you got, do you guys all have TikTok and Facebook, or Instagram, all that kind of, any of y'all have that kind of stuff? Okay. Um, if you do, you get on there and you see there's always some new dance going on, right? Some kind of, let's dance to this song or, or let, you know, there's some kind of trend going on, and that's the majority of the people that we that that are out there on social media, okay? Or scripted. Or yeah, skits, things skits. like that, you know. Yeah. 
what our customers, the people that buy two to $3,000 worth of merchandise from us every month, the ones that watch our videos and help us earn income on our views and stuff like that, what they want is unscripted, everyday, real life, okay? Erica loves, she just got into the chicken business and she loves chickens, okay? We get 40 or 50,000 views anytime we post a chicken video. That means people like it. Okay. We have close to 900,000 followers on TikTok. All right. When we post a video of the square body Chevrolet pickup that we're rebuilding for Clancy to, to be his first pickup when he turns 16, those videos get four or 500,000 views in the first day. So do you think people want to see chicken content or pickup <laughs> content? So do we need to make chicken content or if we're getting paid on the number of views we get, do we want to make square body pickup content? <laughs> Square body pickup content. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, put idea. the chickens in the back or something. We get the best of both worlds, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, knowing who your customer is, and, and that all goes back to your vision and all that kind of stuff, those character issues, is knowing who your market is, okay? Because if you don't know who your market is, you're not going to be successful in what you're doing, okay? You're not going to be able to, and you can be very niche in your in your what your deal is. I mean, say you love making necklaces like you have, okay? All right, say you love doing that. Well, you need to know, you don't need to market that to 20 to 25 year old men, right? They're not buying those. You want to market that to 17 to 25 year old girls, right? So your models, you want to have young girls doing that. You know, you want to use stuff that, that gets to your customer and you want to produce content or advertising, you guys have it better than any other generation has ever had. Do you know why? Because we know what everybody wants. Well, not necessarily what everybody wants, but you know how to get it to them and quickly and efficiently. And it's free. 15 years ago, if I wanted to sell caps, what would I have had to do? Go out and get in the newspaper. I'd have to run an ad in a newspaper, which would only get to Gatesville, mm -hmm. right? I'd have to take an ad out in the Livestock Weekly that would get to a few more, but most of the people that are reading the White Livestock Weekly are 80 year old men and they don't want to buy a cap, right? Oh, the thrifty nickel. Huh? The, oh, the thrifty, thrifty nickel. Well, they don't even know what the thrifty nickel is. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you would have to pay to run those, okay? If you want to run an ad now to sell something, say, what, what are you passionate about? What do you like? Uh, roosters? Or do you just like rooster cap? Rooster barbecue, never mind. Uh, okay. So what what are you passionate about? Like, I don't make anything, but I do color what? guard. I don't color guard a lot. Okay. So maybe maybe you wanted to color guard is like the baton twirling and stuff. So say you wanted to give lessons to teach the next generation how to do baton twirling or how to be a, how to make the color guard team if you have to try out for that. What would you do to get that out there? Put an ad on, does it cost you anything? Yes. You would have to pay to get it on Facebook? Oh, like, I thought, no. No, it's free, right? Advertising now is free. If you if you start a Facebook page, an Instagram, or anything, you can advertise for virtually for nothing. Not and get only it in is front it of, free, like you wouldn't even have to have actual customers. You could monetize your, your business, monetize yourself on YouTube or Facebook or yeah, whatever and make videos of yourself doing it and not even have actual people come to your house. You know, you make the videos and they're just watching them and earning you money. There, so. there are numerous ways to earn money now where you don't even have any. You can set up an Amazon deal and just do, do reviews of stuff you buy on Amazon. People can go to your, you know, buy it off your account and you get a commission at the end of the month. Cost you nothing other than just a little bit of time to do it, to talk about stuff, okay? So all those advantages you guys have a lot of people don't have, but you have to be willing to put in a little bit of time and effort and a little bit of work, okay? So when we get to branding, like our brand is Keep Ranching, okay? The way that came about is the second video that we ever made, I said Keep Ranching in it. I don't know why I said it, I just said it. And then we just kept saying it at the end of every one. Now if I put out a video and I don't say Keep, it don't matter what we're doing. I mean, we could be in here talking about bubble gum, and if at the end of that video I don't say keep ranching, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be a whole lot of people that comment, comments. you didn't say keep ranching. 
you know that's what they equate us to is the key branch and logo that's our brand so everything we have now has a key branch and either a, it'll either have a kr for key branch it'll have some form of key branching in it okay um because that's what our customers have grown to, to know us by okay when you create your brand whatever your brand is whether it's merchandise whether it's a product that you, some other kind of product whatever your business is you you have to be will that that becomes not only that becomes what people know you by right i mean if you say the king ranch what what does that mean the running w okay I mean, to some people, all that is is a pickup, right? They don't know anything about the ranch. To some people, it's what kind of cattle? Santa Gertrudis cattle, right? That's what, they're, that's what they're synonymous with, okay? Do you think that King Ranch is cognitive about anything they do on their place that might jeopardize their brand? So keep that in mind, guys. As you grow your brand, as you grow your businesses, be careful of what you put out because anything that you promote, anything that you, products you use, people will come after you because of that, okay? So be, be willing to recognize and, and pay attention to the things you're using, okay? Because your brand is, is, a, is, a, is who you are. So um, there's something we were going to talk about about that. I want to know if they have questions. Oh, yeah. Y'all got any questions? Like I feel you like such an recording day. yet. Nearly a full year of this, and you still have not realized that until that red light is flashing, you can't start talking. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. So the video cut off at the end of our speech, right when I said, I want to hear what kind of questions they have. I think we kind of talked a little bit more after that, too, but it was a good, very good discussion. Yep. Cody did most of the talking. I was still kind of getting over my sickness. I hope the kids learned something. You know, we, we, we don't claim to know everything at all, ever. We're still learning every day, but we do enjoy passing on what we do know to the next generation, and uh, they seem very receptive to it, and they had some good answers to some questions I asked them. So just knowing that there's a next generation of entrepreneurs out there, people that want to go into business for themselves and do stuff, is uh, it's promising. Mm -hmm. Glad to see that in the future generations coming up. So. Yeah, so y'all let us know if y'all have any questions about the stuff that we talked about in this video. And y'all... Like and subscribe if you're new. Yeah. Keep branching. Keep branching.